because you know why? He's a Frankenstein's monster. Ugh, he's grotesque. <laughs> he's so grotesque. <laughs> this is part of the lore now, is that we have Frankenstein monsters fighting in the U.S. Army. Why well, is this always a challenge? It's always hunting season. And then when it's always hunting season. Grandpa? Grandpa! Oh, Herman, it's you! Hi, Grandpa. I guess I must have dozed off while I was hanging around waiting for you. <laughs> Where's Lily? Oh, she's upstairs waiting for you. Oh, good. I had such a good time at the party, I'm gonna go right upstairs and tell her all about it. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, let her in on the fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he goes. <laughs> In the mood she's in, she's liable to tear him apart. Well, lucky I'm good at jigsaw puzzles. I better get upstairs and hit the slab before the trouble starts. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another amazing, groundbreaking, one-of-a-kind, genre-defining episode of The Monster Hunters, the only show that dares to shun. Nay, we don't just shun. We totally just ignore... <laughs> <laughs> Turn our yes. nose up too. That's right. Look the other way of quality content streaming mm-hmm. that exists pretty much anywhere you go anymore. Shoot, they have so much streaming content. At the gas station, there's streaming content. I shun that That's too. True. I don't go to any gas stations with that. So long, Cheddar News. I don't need to know what's the hot trend on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> to watch a 60 ish year old sitcom about a Frankenstein's monster and his grotesque family. I am Derek, and I'm a monster hunter. And joining me, next to me, on the side, <laughs> joining me at the Frankenstein-headed monster table, which could be shaped like a Frankenstein monster head, or just a table with a head on it, is mm. Sean DMC himself. It's Keith. Hey, what's up? It's Keith. I, too, am a monster hunter. And across the table from Keith, as he does every week, is the Dr. Dre of Kansas, Terry. Hello, yes, and I'm not just talking to my co-hosts, Derek and Keith. I'm looking beyond them to you, listener, directly at you and saying, Hi, it's me, Terry. Oh, oh boy. Can't wait for what shenanigans we get up to this week. But uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm a monster All hunter. those monster hunters, they fly again. I'm, I'm, I'm looking behind me like, who's he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Terry read the book on how to be a good podcaster. Well, yeah, I have to describe what I'm doing before I do it. Yes, mm. well, to look beyond... The yeah. co-host, right directly to the listener. Right. Yeah. Make a connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why do I need to connect with my co-host when I can just connect directly into the brains of the people listening? And, and if you're listening and you are t- and you felt the connection with Terry, tweet at him with the hashtag, Terry touched me with his mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make sure you add the yeah. <laughs> with his mind. <laughs> touched by hashtag touched by Terry. Touched by Terry. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Gentlemen, how are we doing this week? Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing swell. I'm really doing pretty good. Are you? Yeah. You sound swell. What about you, Keefy? Yeah. I'm Munstery. Munstery? That's better than swell. Holy cow! Oh yeah, yeah. What about you, Derek? Oh man, I am not quite Munstery, but I'm doing better than swell. So Swunstery. <laughs> wow, that's or that's Munstel. If it was a cheese from St. Louis, <laughs> it's probably called Munstel. <laughs> mm-hmm. That sounds good. Mm. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> the cop. <laughs> Have Monster you ever had Hunters, Provel cheese? You know, it's a cheese. Sir. There it's, is there is it's, nothing it's, more disappointing than St. Louis style pizza. Really? I've never it, tried really? it. Oh, God, what is it? What's, what makes it St. Louis style? It's super thin. It's cracker thin, like crunchy. Okay. And it has Provel cheese on it. Yeah. Oh, hmm, interesting. Provel cheese is like a processed, like half American, half provolone, half mozzarella. Mm-hmm. It's three halves. All that's how it makes it <laughs> possible. It's just processed, so it melts, but it's that fake, and it tastes mm. weird. Huh, okay, not uh, like the good kind of weird, but just weird. Yeah, just now, back right. in the day uh, when I used to work at a radio station, in Peoria, um, there was an Emos Pizza. It's Emos St. Mm-hmm. Louis style pizza, and I used to eat a ton of that pizza. And you liked it? I I didn't think it was horrible. It was also very cheap and very filling. Oh. There yeah, cheap and filling. The, uh, cheap. I'll take cheap pizza most. Yeah, of it was a, like a large sausage pizza at like lunch with a drink was like five bucks or something like that. It's mm. Oh, that's pretty super good. super thin crust. But you're talking a time where Terry was probably like three. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe five, a five year old Terry. He didn't mm-hmm. understand how much, how money worked. That's true. Uh, yeah. You got to break it down into those terms when you talk about things like that for me, just so I can. Yeah. That's all relative. The, when the you 90s. speak about things from the past, my brain automatically goes back to the age that I was. And <laughs> the <laughs> so. 90s were crazy, man. Yeah. Crazy times. Wild. Oh, well. Yes, they were. I, I, I noticed as I've been editing these episodes, I often transitioned with an oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. It, it, it's a golden, like it works in any situation. So it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you just haven't like re- you haven't like just recorded an oh well oh, just to slap, just slap in there like wherever you need it. Like oh god, that was terrible. Oh, oh well. well. <laughs> oh about, well. We move know, on. Ten takes, it, but you know, just laying around, so it's different each time. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't mean like you didn't. You couldn't comprehend the '90s, Terry. But uh, at the time when Keith was getting a five-dollar pizza and a Coke for lunch, it was. It was. You're you're yeah. what a babe. It was that 1999. Was, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would that's not have saying. comprehended it back then. That's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. time has passed. Money is different now. I mean, it's still <laughs> the same, but just worthless. You know, that's one true. one of the things that blows my mind, and I tell people that keith i know you remember this toppers pizza in eastern Illinois university oh god that's the, now see now we're doing inside baseball back in 1995 uh my roommate and i for bears games we would get a large 20 inch pizza with bacon on it for a whopping five dollars jeez that's a good yes. deal it was a deal, and we'd eat the whole thing too. It's also disgusting. Oh man, it was so good. So, it was the so best much five dollars you could spend. So much grease. Yeah. Hey, that's what you need on a Sunday morning to get through a Bears game in the nineties. Yeah, that <laughs> is true. Very true. Yeah. So we're not here to we're not here to talk about pizza, even though I could do a podcast on mm, pizza. Nice. We are here, <laughs> Pizza Hunters spinoff. Yeah, I. You mm. know, we haven't talked about Patriots. I have ideas, but that might be that might. <laughs> <laughs> that might bubble up to the top. I love that. that would that have to be Pizza Hutters? Would that be what that would be? Oh, yeah. now, it's, now it's ruined. <laughs> well, pizza Hut sponsors us. <laughs> no, Pizza Hut's like the worst thing you can do yourself. You talk about Topper's pizza being bad. You think Topper's is bad? <laughs> Try Pizza Hut. <laughs> uh, no, I think, that's, I think that's what their advertising slogan is, too. <laughs> you, think, you think the worst pizza you've ever had is bad? Nah. You haven't had pizza. Yeah. Come um, try it now for eight dollars <laughs> this week. Now I could talk about pizza for the next hour and a half with great detail and uh, diving into the minuscule details of every bite, but we can't. We're here to talk about season one, episode twenty-four, "Love mm. Locked Out." Mm. Yes, of the monsters. I didn't. I don't know if I mentioned that we're talking about the monsters. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what we do here. Yeah. Season one, episode twenty-four of the Monsters. Ooh, at least this isn't love after lockup that we're talking oh, about. Oh, thank, thank goodness! I don't even know what that is. I know it's. A, I know. I know. I know conceptually what it may be, but beyond that, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, you don't want to know. Yeah. Well, we're not here to talk about that either. We're here to talk about love locked out. Mm-hmm. But before we can talk about love locked out, we got to lock ourselves in. <laughs> Light a candle. That's Run right. down the. I'm scurrying down the hallway today because I'm tired of the low hanging fruit, the Twizzlers, and the rant shit. Uh, get down there through the cobwebs. Hello, ghosts. I've made peace with most of them. Mm. I, I had a long talk with the larger one in the corner because he's very upset that I vacuumed up his wife several episodes ago. <laughs> it's only com- companion for all these hundreds. I know, of years. and I told him, I was like, dude, I don't know where they go once they go in the vacuum." <laughs> And he's like, suck me in there, too, so I can be with her. I'm like, ah, I gave up. I, I can't mm-hmm. do that anymore. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. Uh, but we had a heart-to-heart, and uh, we're begrudging friends now. Uh, anyway, over to the bookshelf. Watch <laughs> out for Indiana Jones's leavings. There's a book. Pull it off. It's the tome. It's huge. It's getting big. I think this thing grows, Keith. It might be sentient. Blowing out the dust. <sighs> Opening up. <clears throat> Drop it to a knee. <clears throat> Holding up the book. Alter Boy to Pre-Style for Keith's Almanac. Uh, Monster Hunter's Almanac, tidbit. Boy, I, it shouldn't be so hard to say. Tidbit, factoid, uh, shit sheet of psalm of the week. All right, all right. Uh, I, we're going to open up to uh, Maryland, uh, chapter 5, verse 32. 
Five thirty-two. My favorite hmm. day of the year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Huh. Um. So in a lot of recent episodes, we have talked about uh the the nose makeup. Um, oh yes. And- you, oh, do you have a deep dive on nostril makeup? <laughs> Not nostril no. makeup specifically, but I, I it did get me a little bit curious about like who was doing the makeup for for oh. the monsters. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were going to share pictures of you with giant nostril makeup. <laughs> I got a little curious, so I painted up my nose. No, kind of nice. <laughs> and and I mean the the stuff if they're at a distance, it actually works really well. But they they've done a lot of up closes in recent episodes with it, and it's just they, they seem to be adding more and more and more. And I was like, well. Who did the you know who did the makeup for the monsters? Um, the first name on the list was Carl Silvera, but he only did one episode. Hmm. Um, and then there's also Larry Germain and uh, Virginia Darcy. Uh, they each did 51 episodes and 20 episodes, uh, you know, respectively. And then I'm looking at there, and I'm like, "There's a guy named Bud Westmore. He's makeup <laughs> artist. He is credited for all 70 episodes." Okay. And I was scrolling down a little bit further and I see there's a Michael Westmore. Oh! 60, 69 episodes. I know Michael Westmore. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Um, that, that's a name I know. Holy shit. Yeah, wow. He's no Stacy Keach, but... No, well, see, that's a reference to something. Uh, that, never that mind. Patreon, uh, heard. Yeah. Join the Patreon so you can understand these terrible inside <laughs> yeah, jokes. Another bit of esotericism. Yeah. Oh, no, um, Michael Westmore. He's like a He's a Oscar winning uh makeup effects artist. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, he is on 69 episodes of The Monsters all uncredited. uncredited. Michael Westmore is? And then there's Purse Westmore. Wait, what? 60 69 episodes of The Monsters all uncredited as well. What? Hmm. I'm like I'm like what's okay, what, I'm like what's going on? Let me let me look it up here. The Westmore family is a prominent family in Hollywood makeup. Mm-hmm. Uh, George Westmore and the family, they've had four different generations serve Hollywood as makeup artists uh, in, in, you know, all, all around. George was apparently a, an English wig maker. Oh, I love that. Um, the makeup artist and hairstylist guilds George Westmore Lifetime Achievement Award is named after him. Achievement or achievement? Achievement Award <laughs> is named after him. And... So, like, I mean, he he's done his own work and all, but, like, the craziest thing then that he did was he fathered three different generations of movie-making makeup artists, uh, starting with his six sons, uh, Purse, wow. Ern, Monty, Wally, Bud, and Frank. Um, by 1926, uh, Mont, Purse, M, and Bud had penetrated the industry and become the chief makeup artist at the <laughs> four major... Yeah, at the four major studios... So like this guy, like his kids suddenly were they were the main people at the four major studios. Um groundbreaking in beauty and horror illusions. Son Monty was apparently a dishwasher for a bit, but then became Rudolph Valentino's sole makeup artist. And do you guys know Rudolph Valentino? I don't think I I think that's a no. big enough name. No. Uh, he's, I don't, big time. Yeah, I mean he's a big time older. I mean he died in nineteen twenty six, but he, he's at least he was a, <laughs> Uh-huh. Wait, 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 he's a big time what? Actor. I mean, he was a big oh, actor okay, at the time. Okay, okay. Um, but Monty went to work at some place. Died a hundred years ago, Keith. <laughs> and you think that we know him off the top of our heads? Yeah. Um, I know so, the name. Yeah. Uh, so after Valentino died, though, I guess Monty went uh, to work at some place, and 13 years later, worked himself to death during doing the makeup for Gone with the Wind. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Um, Stanley Kubrick's Gone with the Wind. <laughs> 700 takes. So, oh, frankly, my dear, I don't Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess, so the, the original Westmore, George, because of the danger from his electrically run lathes and saws that he used for stuff, mm-hmm. I don't, that doesn't seem to be for, I don't know how that would be for makeup, but uh, he had to get his hands insured. Hmm. Makes uh, sense. The Westmores as a family were awarded a star on Hollywood Walk of Fame uh, in, uh, it doesn't say what year, um, but it's at 1645 Vine Street in Hollywood is where that one is at. Uh, he was he did work on the 
creature. Oh no, Bud is the guy who did work on the creature from Black Lagoon, the Indominus yeah, Strain, and Soylent Green are, cool. are three of the bigger ones. And then yeah, uh, Mike Michael Westmore, Derek, that you that you said you recognized. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't he show up on um, like the Face Off uh, thing as yeah, well? But, yeah, he is one of the. Well, his daughter is the host of Face Off, and he's mm-hmm. like the executive producer, and shows up and gives critiques. Yeah, uh, I love that show. Um, Wally was uh, he headed up Paramount from 1926, um, where he, uh, his main thing was the uh, gruesome transformation in Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Um, nice. Bud led Universal's makeup department for 23 years, specializing in rubber prosthetics. Um, later generations include brothers Michael and Marvin, who excelled in special effects makeup. And they did work on Blade Runner. Uh, they actually won, um, I think they won an award for Mask, um, hmm. the movie with uh, Cher and yep. um, Sam Smoking. Elliott. Sam Elliott looking the same age as he does now. Also, Eric Stoltz. Yeah, uh, and, not the and, mask, right? Not no, the, no. The green thing, yeah. And, uh, and Raging Bull. Smoking. Smoking. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, there's George, Bud. Uh, Michael is still alive, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you know, George, uh, he died in 1931. Purse, Wally, Monty, Frank, Ern, which says sons, but this picture of Ern is not, it, it appears to be a lady in there. So you the makeup or Ern it moved on. Um, Marvin, Monty, you know, but so. Pretty cool. I mean, I went to look to find out just something basic about. I went to find out who was doing nostril makeup, and <laughs> and, and it led me down this, uh, you know, this whole thing about you know this, you know, credit of introducing uh, a family that's introduced the art of makeup to the motion picture industry overall. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe I'm, so they're like uncredited. So they just like were they like consultants maybe or something I, like uncredited for 69 out of the 70 episodes only the one guy got all 70 and was credited for it i don't like i'm assuming they were like assistants or oh, yeah no, that makes mm-hmm. sense yeah yeah so it's safe to say it was a westmore decision to make their nostrils so huge mm-hmm. yes yeah i mean yeah he's clearly and that's uh, a creative choice too mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it brings a whole new light to it honestly I, i'm kind of into it now now the, the thing about the nostril makeup is though if it wasn't there, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter, right? Like, you just be mm-hmm. like, okay, they have noses. But now with that giant nostril makeup, it's like, they don't just have noses. They have monstrously large nostrils as well. Mm-hmm. And it's disturbing. And I think Herman's got some crazy nostrils in uh, this week, too. I noticed them. And it was disturbing. Disturbing. Very grotesque, yes. Very grotesque. You, know, uh, you can check out more of their stuff at westmoremuseum.com. Oh, I'd, I'd head there. And the, and, and the House of Westmore is a thing. But, like, yeah, I mean, these, that it's great. Like, I was reading one, <clears throat> pardon me, one of the things I read, like, and I was trying to find it again in, in the notes here, was that the guy was in, like, the main, uh, you know, the main guy, George, he was in, he was in Britain and he was fighting in the, the South African War. And then he went back to Canterbury and opened up a a hairstylist place, moved to Canada, doing it some more, and then eventually moved to California to do it. And then from there, like just a whole family of people who have dominated uh, the industry of, you know, makeup and special effects, uh, sure. like those type of things. So that's what I found this week uh, by, by flipping through the old book. That was a good find, Keith. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love makeup and visual effects in movies. Like Foley work, I think Mm -hmm. good practical effects are like, wow. Oh, I love it. Yeah. It adds a lot. Like, if it's done right, yeah, I I love it. I mean, good CGI is great. And like, sure. The good CGI that exists, you don't know that it's CGI. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. crazy stuff. Like, oh, there's a whole city there, but they filmed it in like a soundstage, right? Right. That sort of CGI is the stuff that I like. Um, but like practical effects, oh boy, you can't oh, go yeah. wrong. Yeah, when you watch like movies like what, like the th- like the big goopy monsters, like in a horror mm-hmm. movie, that adds so much than like just a weird CGI thing crawling on the ceiling. That's just not, I don't know, there's something that's not quite as fun, not as tactile. Like, I love yeah. like a, a real thing there, yeah, yeah. But, and then I always like trying to figure out how they did it, like, um, 
no it was like the head exploding or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. that. oh man, mm-hmm. good almanac, Keith. Hey, hold on, wait, hold on. There's a post note here on the almanac. Oh, Before damn it! Put it away. Hmm. Wonder what's that. Uh, this is a note from a uh, friend of the show, Dave Champa, over at the Airwolf Years. Oh my God! Whoa, uh, we have a friend of the show. It says, "Just want to let you know that the Monster Hunters has been one of my favorite listens of the week." Wow. We've been behind on the episodes, but they've uh, been consistently spot on in terms of humor and point by point. Keep it up. Hey, oh, that's really nice. I'll Thanks, take Dave. that, man. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Dave. I wonder that's how awesome. you got in here to put the note, though. That's weird. That, hmm. that is. Uh, uh, we're at the beef up the security here at the compound. Uh, the, the compound needs some more yeah, adjustments, I think. I think mm. it's probably because I describe how we get around all the time. Like right now, we're going up the fifty-two stairs. Up out of, you know what? You're up right. Out of the cathedral. Oh, we're not taking the dumb waiter. No, no dumb mm-hmm. waiter. Okay. Don't mention that. Oh man, that I had order out Chinese food today. I gotta run that shit up. Mm. Up the stairs <laughs> into the kitchen through the mud room, out the back door, mm-hmm. seventeen steps down. <laughs> Out the back door, down the sidewalk. Watch out for there's a little crack there between the 13th and the 15th step. Uh, don't want to trip on that because mm-hmm. then you get to the dock. Open up the gate. Combination six four two one. Uh, open up the <laughs> oh, gate. Oh man! <laughs> Make As, sure you oil up the gates. Really creaky. Um, so if you want to be sneaky. Yeah. yeah if you want to be sneaky, a uh, good thing I there's a can of oil out here in the bush. Right yeah. there, right? If you look to the left, right? Yeah, next yeah, that's right there. Yeah. If you want to be really sneaky, please replace this old gate for <laughs> us. And, um... yep. <laughs> out the back door, out to the docks, onto the boat where Captain Terry is going to take us three miles out into international waters. We're going to get into that craft known as a skooma. We're going down deep, deep to the depths of hell for another deep dive in the skooma. That's right. We're going deep once again. Um, and I've got some good news. This episode was directed by a newcomer. Oh, we yes. We haven't heard this guy's name at all yet. <coughs> it had a fresh feel to it. <laughs> it did, yeah, it did? didn't it? It did? <laughs> it really felt new and uh, invigorated when I watched new this one. New and fresh. Mm-hmm. No reused footage whatsoever no, in this episode. Yeah. I was energized as soon as mm-hmm. it kicked on. I could tell something was different. It's directed by Charles Barton. Mm. Um, so I that's always a good feeling. I Barkley. Charles Barkley. God, I wish. This episode's mm-hmm. terrible. <laughs> uh, maybe he'll direct one in the 80s. Oh, that'd be awesome. The Mound Round of Rebound, straight out of Auburn, directing <laughs> um, Monsters Today. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be great. Yeah, he's. I want him to at least be in one of the episodes. Like, yeah. maybe they remake the basketball one, but he's in it. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, Herman versus, like, the Dream Team? Yeah. <laughs> that'd be amazing yeah yeah oh, i mean charles barkley I... he went up against godzilla he can go up against yeah him. you're right mm-hmm. well go godzilla, godzilla is only the number three rated monster god damn it. charles barkley's please. charles barkley's uh, number one rated monster god damn it you uh, really dunked on him folks please sign up for the patreon so you can get these yeah. references i want to make and then realize that i can't well that would have been last week's patreon episode so yeah. they heard it yep if you know you know but uh He's only directed one episode, so if you really like this, if it really energized you, well, too bad. He's not coming back. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Darn, I'm so upset. Oh, no. Did he have anything outstanding you directed so we could find some more work by him? He did. He did, oh, actually. Yes. Um, so he's got 98 directing credits uh, from 1934, 1971, blah, blah, blah. And I actually watched one of this guy's movies recently, and it's pretty good. Um, what? Abbott and St- Costello meet Frankenstein. He oh, directed that. Oh, that sounds that. awesome. That's a, it's actually pretty good. I've been watching all these Universal movies, these old ones with you know the classic monsters. And yeah. like, this comes, I've been burning through them, and the later ones have kind of been a drag. It's been like, oh, God. And I finally got to this one, and I was like, this is actually, this is such a breath of fresh air. It's actually high quality. Mm. It's, you know, some of the humor is like, like, I don't know, some of these old movies, the humor doesn't quite click with me sometimes. But for the most part, I thought it was pretty funny and pretty good. So that was... I mean, good for him. That's cool that he directed that. Hell yeah. Um, he actually did a few Abba and Costello movies, uh, and they actually specifically requested him for the Meet Frankenstein one. So oh. I think he got along with them pretty well. Uh, and, of course, you know, he's done a lot of TV. He did 90 episodes of Dennis the Menace. He did 106 God. episodes of Family Affair. And, uh, you know, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention that he directed 14 episodes of the Gail Storm Show. Oh, oh my goodness. Susanna. Oh, Susanna. <laughs> That's right. 
Uh, just when I thought I'd never hear that name again, I saw that on there, so of course I have to mention it. Uh, he directed a movie called Shaggy Dog in 1951. Oh, um, DA. So. Uh, yeah. Is that is the DA? Is that a follow? That's a follow up one, isn't it? Probably. And it's not the Tim Allen one, or was he Chevy Chase? Both, that's I what, think. They, yeah, they, it was Tim they, Allen. I'm gonna, I was going to bring that up. So, oh boy, you know, it's a timeless premise. Human man becomes <laughs> dog. Um, <laughs> not just timeless. man. But I think as a father, right? That's like the mm-hmm. whole thing that makes it. Well, it looks like in the original, it was the boy becomes the dog, like the son. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Which is weird. Uh, he like takes a pill and like he drops on the floor before he takes it. I guess the hair must have got on it. I don't know, but he turns into the dog. Um, it was it was strange, but well, yeah, what you guys mentioned earlier, Disney re- actually remade this in two thousand six, and I think I've actually seen this. Like my memory was like, whoa, like I, was like, I know what this is somehow, and it's uh yeah, it's about a guy, Tim Allen himself. He turns into a dog. Uh, the trailer, you know, you see a lot of classic like um, he's a neglectful father, but he gets bitten by a dog who somehow passes on his doghood to the Tim Allen, and he can switch back and forth, I guess. Um, it's got classic dog songs in it, like Atomic Dog, the Bow Wow Wow, Yippee Yo Yippee A. It's got Who Let the Dogs Out in it. Man, it's a great trailer. <laughs> um, you know, Tim Allen, he gets into a lot of dog hijinks. He gets confused, like, oh, he's in man form. But oh, does he sniff somebody's butt as a man? Uh, he's. I think he sniffs a dog's butt, actually. Oh, Tim Allen. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, classic. <laughs> That's what that dog did when he got down there. Um, that was just caught on camera. He was doing that. <laughs> yeah. Old old habits from when he was in prison for selling coke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, great trailer. I was just surprised that, yeah, Disney remade it, and I'd actually think I've seen it. At least I've seen the trailer. Maybe it like, played in front of one of my VHSs back in the day. Um, but... Anyways, great stuff. So we'll move on. <laughs> um, that is great uh, stuff. So, anyways, uh, or what was your transition? Oh well, I should say. Oh well. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> so this, was, <laughs> this was written by James Allardyce and Tom Adair, two very familiar names. We've heard those names before. Yeah, so I'm not even gonna bother. But I did um, notice there was a lack of uh, casual racism in this episode. Yes, <laughs> that's always a plus, right? Was yeah. it written by the other people? Oh, Norman. Um, the other guy's signature stylings. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his no yeah, what is his signature? Mm-hmm. Casual racism. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this had no racism, which is awesome. I do like this combo just because I like their backstory of one's like a player, right? The other guy's a musician and they mm-hmm. like hung out together. I don't know why, that just I thought that was cool. But like I said, I'm not getting into it. Um so we got a guest star, Elliot Reed as Dr. Harvey Baxter. Mm-hmm. He's got 97 credits on IMDb from 1938 to 1995. You know, done some TV. He's done some movies. He did uh, uncredited voice work on It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which nice. I've mentioned a few episodes. Mm-hmm. Not a few episodes. It's been a while since I mentioned it. but It's been a while. It's been a while, but it's reoccurring it's again. What do you know? Um, he, you know? He's on a few episodes of Here's Lucy. Uh, nice. He was actually in an episode of Seinfeld, which... I was wow. surprised by. He was he a must... soup Nazi. No. Oh. <laughs> that was him. No. <laughs> Man. That oh, would be awesome, I had to stop. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Wait, I think he played Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was George. Yeah, Holy he... shit. <laughs> um, he was in a movie called Son of Flubber, which is a sequel to the original Flubber. Uh-huh. I was trying to read the description of Son of Flubber. Wasn't really sure what the premise was, so I was trying to like find the like. I was like, okay, so if I read the original description of Flubber, then maybe that'll make it either give me enough context clues <laughs> to figure out what the second one's about. Um, I could not find the first Flubber. Apparently, it's got a totally different name. Uh, it's oh, called the the first one. Yeah, it's like Professor Mary Winkle's Happy Duty bounce formula or something like that yeah the absent-minded mm. professor yeah, that's what it is yes mm. you're close <laughs> um i don't know why they didn't just call it flubber that's a much better title but uh elliot reed was in both of those movies and um what's funny is that the uh the star for both flubber or right no sorry the absent-minded professor and son of flubber was also in the shaggy dog the original mm. so there's a connection mm-hmm. interesting what does it mean? 
I'll let the listener. Well, wasn't the star out. Jerry Lewis of the FZ no. Minor Professor? Mm, no, it was somebody else here. It was um, Fred McMurray. Yeah. Oh. Why did so. I think it was Jerry Lewis? I, and I know it's not um, Robin Williams who played the in the remake of Flubber. No. Yeah. No. Unfortunately. Yeah, anyways, I'm going to, you know, slowly rise back to the surface. We think we've gotten enough good info here. Too late. So. I am already recording the next episode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. That's how fast I am. <laughs> Wait, who's he talking I'm in to the in future. <laughs> here, Derek, here's, here's the uh, almanac. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Wait, well, oh, we're going. That to... was a good one, Keith. <laughs> Who knew that Herbert Munster was also the first man to walk on the moon for the Russians? I have no idea. For the Russians, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's the winter, uh, winter right. soldier, the winter, winter monster. Yeah. The, well, what are the words to activate the winter monster? Oh, uh, mm. fiddlesticks, fiddlesticks, um, <laughs> darn, 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 Pussy oh, cat. Pussycat's definitely on there. Yeah. yeah. And then he's activated and he's yep. a Russian. Russian asset, killer. I guess. Oh, boy. That sounds like a good episode of the Munsters. But instead, we have season one, episode 24. <laughs> Love locked out. Do, do you think we'll get to that premise eventually where he becomes a Russian asset? I wish we could... would get to that premise, but we won't. <laughs> Original air date, March 3rd, 1965. Herman infuriates Lily when he gets a little tipsy at an office party, <laughs> according to Amazon. That's what Amazon describes it as. Hell yeah, I, I like Amazon's description because they're succinct, and they yeah. get you they they whet your appetite. I'm like, oh, Herman a little tipsy? That sounds fun. Yes, it's enthralling. Yeah, that, that, well, that's the thing that throws me of. out. That's the thing that throws me off. Is I'm, I mean, Grad, they don't. I mean, we'll go through, but I. Mean, I I didn't think that he was drunk. I thought he was just giddy about going to a party. Oh, I thought he was drunk. We'll get there. Yeah. 7.2. Lofty Very. on IMDb. <laughs> Lofty, man. And this is one of the lower rated episodes on IMDb, too. It is, yeah. And it still feels like, boy, there's some generous reviewers out there. Yes, yeah, so there's some. It's, it's a classic monsters where it's like, but I like some stuff in it. But there's a couple parts where I'm just like, oh god, come on, like this is just ridiculous. I don't understand why this is even a problem. But we'll get into it. I will say that I genuinely did not laugh this entire episode. Really? Wow! Not okay. once. Even when the canned laughter at the beginning when he speeds up the eating and, <laughs> and, it, and they're going nuts. No, you didn't laugh at that. No, I didn't laugh at that. I didn't. I I smi- There's a part that made me want to laugh because it's something that I reference and happens. But we'll get there. Mm-hmm. Oh right. God, yeah, that was very funny. So I'm I'm probably gonna laugh at the description of it, but I did not laugh during the watching. Mm-hmm. So a hearse pulling up at the monster's house. We've seen this shot before. Oh yes. It is very reminiscent of was it last episode? It was I last don't... episode, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So a hearse pulls up. Uh, it's Her- Herman's carpool. That, right? Herman has a carpool. He's running late. So what do, what, do, what do they do? What does he do? He eats his breakfast at high speed. Again. Like super fast. He goes through all the stuff, eats it, drinks it, and then runs out to the carpool. I think Grandpa. I automatically want to hear the Benny Hill theme song at some point in time when he starts doing this. Yakety sex. Yeah, I've literally seen this. I thought it was reused. Like this, I think it's slightly different, but it felt like it was the exact same like thing that we did. We just well, there's some reused footage coming up again. Grandpa goes just like the old country. It does my heart good to see a man wolf his food. Nice. Yeah, and just like every week, the monsters are having breakfast. They're eating something. Today is Herman's annual office party, so he'll be home late premise set up right there mm-hmm. lily's worried remember she was worried about the uh the reunion for the army yeah she's worried about this one those parties can get wild but herman he's no water cooler casanova i like that <laughs> line yep 
In fact, the ladies at the office have been calling him Herman the Cube because he's so square. <laughs> I love that. I, I, that did make me laugh. That's a funny nickname. It, I think the best part about that is like after Herman said it, he kind of shrugged like, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> By like, the way, whatever. this is two weeks in a row. Like you referenced another one where Lily was worried, but this is two weeks in a row where she thinks Herman's stepping out on her. Yes. Because of the uh, the whole, th- I mean, I, the one last week where she uh, gets the person to go, um, the private detective, oh, God. and, and that hires was him. Last week. Yeah, yeah, and so all right, so these these things seem we keep seeing these things that run together. Like uh, Eddie gets bullied for three episodes in a row. Grandpa yeah, runs away true. for three episodes in a row, point. and and now we're at the Lily is yeah. worried about Herman's love and affection yeah, which right. i don't think there's any reason for her to ever worry no <laughs> well in her eyes herman's a, yeah he's a hunk so yeah and there's definitely no reason to worry because he says he'll be home at 6 30. Mm-hmm. well the party be done i'll be home by 6 30. then we see two dudes in the car these yes. are herman's co-workers yes i'm like I was nice. so excited i was like oh i can't wait to see herman interacting with these guys as work friends this episode and Mm. And, but, and then they're like, you think Munster's wife will let him go to the party? They didn't call him Herman. They call him Munster. Yeah. I love that. And they're like, oh, I told him the party would be done by 630. But it really won't be going until 9. <laughs> and they're like, oh, ha, ha, he'll get home by midnight. They're laughing. Ha, yeah. ha. And I get this because they want him to go. Like, they actually seem yeah. like they're his friends. Yeah. yeah. They want Herman to go to the party. Unless unless they're like those like backhanded friends that want to get Herman in trouble. No, that could be, yeah. But also, I, I, I can't wait for the episode to really explore their dynamics. So, yes, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, we'll get into that when we explore it later. <laughs> One day. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So, if you're gonna just throw that out there, like they set this premise up of, oh, we told him the wrong time, and he's not gonna get home till whenever, and then the like, this is one of those things where like it just disappears into the the ether of the monster verses of, oh, these guys set up something, and then. We never see them again. But... Oh, no, we sure don't. No. Uh, well, don't spoil it yet, Keith. Oh, <laughs> spoilers. Because we need to put a tag on that, Keith. Oh, you just spoiler. said, you just said, not not this episode. <laughs> well, yeah, we got to. I'll put the spoiler tag on that, too. That's spoiler right. for minute 38 of this episode when we say. <laughs> so, anyway. We get the reused footage of Herman racing out to the car, hopping into the back, closing the door, sliding in. Car drives away. Banger. Yep. Tuba's still there. Still no. too real fun. Uh, another of like the th- maybe third in a row of extremely short cold opens. Yes. It was yeah. it was very concise. Mm-hmm. Uh, it- still too long, but concise. <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. my expectations for something that I did not get. I was like, oh, well, I'm so excited. This is going to be a party episode where Herman's like interacting with a bunch of people and partying it up. <laughs> I was so Spoilers, excited for this. Terry. Yeah, God damn it. <laughs> well, there's a minute this. 37 of this episode. I, it set up my expectations. I haven't said if it failed or Man, anything. Man, I, I said that. And I just looked at the timer, and it's it's at 3842. Bang. And we're only at the banger. Banger. Come back. Lily is knitting. Eddie's in his pajamas. What time? It must be the end of the night. Or early morning, because that's when they should be going to bed because of the monsters, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eddie's in his pajamas, wondering when Dad will get home. He wasn't here for supper or anything. Then Lily does this whole, like, well, in Herman's job, sometimes they need to do that. It keeps morale up, blah, 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 blah. Then Eddie says, oh, another office party, eh? <laughs> Lily sends Eddie off to bed. Uh, gives him and Wolf Wolf a kiss. Wolf Wolf mm-hmm. is the star of this episode. Oh, yeah. The new classic Monsters character, Wolf. Yes. <laughs> and they say it in such a weird way that sounds like Wolf Wolf, but it's Wolf Wolf. Oh, well. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Lily sends Eddie off to bed, gives him women Wolf Wolf a kiss. Grandpa gives kisses them both again. Eddie runs off. Uh, oh, can I have Spot sleep with me tonight? And Lily's like, well... That's fine. Keep an eye on him. He's got a cold. If he sneezes, he'll light the room on fire. He'll light the drapes on fire. Then Eddie opens up the stairs, and we see a very good glimpse yes. of Spot. And it wasn't just a static 
metal structure that shoots fire. It looked like it was a puppet. It looked awesome. I yeah. love this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It had, uh, it had multiple points of articulation and moved mm-hmm. around. It's like, wow, it's the Westmores. It's the Westmore touch, <laughs> yes, Keith. Uh, Damn yes. it. If I only had known that beforehand. Because that's what they do, practical sense. effects mm-hmm. and makeup. With less so, and more, you know you're getting more. I know. Oh, this, episode, this episode mm-hmm. went from a 7.2 to a 10. <laughs> uh, so Spot spits out fire. Nice. Um, awesome. And then, it, like, I can't believe how he looked that much more animated. Just... Then the bird chimes in with... All is well. Wait. Nine, the bum nine, is late. Nine o'clock. All's well. Correction. The bum ain't home yet. Mm-hmm. And I will say this. And I, it's not just because I know it's Mel Blanc, but it's or Mel Blanc, however you pronounce his last name. He sounded a lot like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> he did. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, we're totally right. Lily's agitated. Uh, Grandpa calls him something, but I can't remember. Uh, so she's like, I didn't realize it was that late. I'm going to call him at the office. <laughs> I don't know why, but he, she does. Yeah, I don't. This starts to. It's bring nine up o'clock. Issue. Yeah, what's the problem? Herman can't He's an stay adult. Out? Yes. I mean, he was supposed to be home three hours prior, though, so maybe that's the reason why she wants to check but in. She knows him. he's still partying. Like. Ugh, yeah, know. but I think she said she's going to call him again. So she's called him one other time, at least. Yeah, I don't know. This mm-hmm. goes on. This is a big contention point for me with this whole episode. <laughs> yeah. So Herman's at the party. I really enjoyed Herman at the party. Yes. Because he's standing there. There's streamers. There's shadows on the wall next to him to like indicate that there's other people dancing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're all singing. And it sounds so funny because it's clearly a record playing. <laughs> it's clearly a record playing, but it's the it's the it sounds like a, a group of people singing. And Herman's singing along. He answers the phone, he finds it, and then you see Lily. This is Lily. What do you mean Lily who? <laughs> that was funny. That made and me then laugh. you see Herman he's singing with the group. And then you hear this. Miss Habersham says, Come on back, Hermie baby. I'm like, oh man, Herman's having a good time. He's got a party hat on. He's dancing. He's singing some uh, uh, public domain songs that have been yep. recorded on a record. I love it. <laughs> well, I love this. Yes. Lily is pissed. She hangs up and leaves Herman hanging. He's like, well, what? Hello? Hello? Now, he asks her a very specific question, though. Oh, what did he say? He's like, oh, Lily, great. Do you, do you know what the second verse of Shortening Bread is? <laughs> Shortening Bread is sung by the Andrew sisters. <laughs> and... It starts off the first verses put on the skillet, slip on the lid. Mama's going to make a little shortened bread. Then they all she's going to do. Mama's going to make a little coffee, too. Yep. Verse two, three little children lying in bed. Two were sick. The other most dead. <laughs> Sent for the doctor. And the doctor said, give those children some shortened bread. So I thought it was interesting that they went with this second verse that talks about somebody being most dead. <laughs> That is. That's, That's pretty funny. fitting. Yeah. Oh, Keith. Doing the deep dive. Scoom apart, too. I, oh, I yeah. just love that. That's what it is. It could have been like the Muffin Man. Have you yes. seen the Muffin Man? <laughs> what are they there's just I'll be honest. I felt like I, I felt like I was slacking off on my job uh, in recent episodes of, oh, of having those little extra tidbits throughout the thing. So oh, as soon as I heard him ask for that, I'm like, ooh, what's the second verse? What is find this? that second verse? Yeah. Second yeah. verse. Different from the first, because the kids are all dead. Uh, I, just, I just assume that this is what the people in the sixties party do. Like this is hit no. music back then. <laughs> in, in, at, in at a uh, camp down races <laughs> song. I love that. By the way, at a uh, at a at a mortuary office party, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the parlor, they know how to party. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. So Lily is fuming. I can't wait any longer. If that Cornball Caruso. I don't know what that means, what that is, but I like the way it sounds. If that Cornball Caruso calls back, tell him I went to bed. Lily is, in fact, so mad. She says, I could chew nails. Yep. And Grandpa goes, be my guest. And he has a handful of (laughs) nails. Big nails, too. Mm -hmm. And I think Lily takes one, but that's it. She walks off. Grandpa shrugs. 
and then he eats some nails. <laughs> he just starts yeah. eating them. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah, another great stunt work by Al Lewis on this, where he yeah. just grabs some real nails and chomped them Candy down. Candy nails made by the Westmores. Ooh, yes. So then Herman, we cut to Herman comes stumbling home singing everyone's favorite Camp Town races. Camp Town races, sing this. Oh. Dude, uh, well, dude, uh, him and Marshawn hanging out. And, uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> such a good song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Herman, like Herman goes to unlock the door, and he, wouldn't you know it, he's so drunk, he breaks his key off. <laughs> You know what? Maybe he is drunk because that didn't occur to me either. But you're right. Like I was like thought that was weird that he had such a tr- trouble with the door. Yeah. But I he's think drunk. you're right. Yeah. He's not like hammered, but he's tipsy enough to mm-hmm. be like, I can't even get my door open. And he yeah. breaks the key off, and he shrugs and just punches a hole through the door. <laughs> a very drunk move, right? Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, he. I mean, I, he doesn't seem like he drinks very often. So that's like, yeah, the annual office party is the one where he gets to let loose. So. Yeah. Me might have only had a couple small drinks and it's Probably. messing with them. Yeah, and who knows how much blood's running through that vein like veins like the, the alcohol content. <laughs> yeah. His, yeah. his his alcohol blood content, not the other way around. He's got more alcohol than blood. Yeah, exactly. So he just punches a hole through the door, opens it from the inside. I like that. Herman clomps his way in, turns on the light, grandpa's hanging from the ceiling, and we heard what we heard from the opener. And Grandpa is 100% setting up Herman. Yes, and he turns to the camera and, like, explains his, yeah, it's just really yeah. weird, very mm-hmm. Deadpool-esque, you know, yeah. She's going to tear him apart, but I yeah. love jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. But Herman's all, <laughs> whoopee, and he's swinging his party hat around. He's still got his party hat on. And it's not any kind of party hat. It's the kind you get at a kid's birthday party. Mm-hmm. It's a little pointy cone with elastic band on it. Mm-hmm. Herman goes up to his bedroom, but the door won't open. Now, he goes, hmm, must be stuck. Now, not one minute ago, he was willing to punch a hole through his front door to get in. Yes. He gets to his bedroom. No, oh, I can't open it. It's stuck. <laughs> and then Herman says, Herman's come home to stay. Do da, do da. I'm loving this Herman who's having just a good old time. Like, yeah, I like him when he's singing so happy Camp Town like Races. Mm-hmm. Drunk Herman. The best. Lily throws a vase at the door. Herman's like, oh, you know. Uh, Herman says to open the door like a good little wifey. I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, e. yeah. So we've kicked out the um, uh, casual racism for. These type of comments about yeah the, yeah, yeah. De- definitely like the casual sexism yeah because there's there's several of them in this uh, in this episode yes oh oh god yeah there's a ton of that you're right um and then Herman's like okay no more playing pussy kid wants to go sleepy by <laughs> I love that line dude so, this this upsets Lily to no end it's like this is a straw that broke the back she gets up. Grabs a blanket and a pillow, opens the door and says, Well, Pussycat can go sleepy by on the living room couch. Throws the shit at him, and Herman's like, What? And it looks like he's about ready to say something, and she closes the door. Pussycat Wanna Go Sleepy By is the debut Adam debut album by the water cooler Casanovas. Okay. Is it? Yeah, that's that that's why <laughs> that's why I'm imagining. Yeah. I heard them re- referred to in a review as a bunch of cornball carusos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Their hit song was the cover of Camp Down Races. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they don't add anything to it. It's just a straight cover. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so Lily's upset. She throws up Bubba. Herman's like, what? So now we see Herman on the couch. He's snoring on the couch, sleeping. Now, His head is closest to the fireplace. Can I ask a quick question, though? Yeah. Is she... <sighs> Is she really pissed just because he came home late or because she thinks something happened like that? He's like flirting around. Know. Is she still stuck on that? Because whatever it is, it's one million percent irrational. Yes. It doesn't yeah. Make sense. And it actually bothers me every time because it's now, you know, we're 20 some episodes in. It's happened at least a half dozen times easily. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't get I don't get this. He's mm. it's not. They're not Morticia and Gomez level like horny for each other, but Herman's very much in love with his wife and has no yeah. no intentions out. Yet she's constantly freaking out about it. Yes, always. Yeah. 
And I usually like grumpy Lily. Like, I like when she's a little angry at things. But this is too much. This doesn't make any sense to me. Like, she's yeah. just being irrationally mad at Herman for no reason. Like, yes. he went to the party. That's fine. Like, are you mad that you didn't get invited? Like, you don't have anything else you could do? To, I don't know. It's just... Look, that was my other thought was, oh, he, so he went to the party. He didn't, like, could you bring your spouse? So, like, she, she, could she have gone along? And that's yeah. why she's extra pissed as well. I'm just like, it. I don't, if the only thing is that you think Harmon was out there, you know, he's a philanderer, I like, yeah, I don't get it's, it. It's bothersome. It is. And it's really, and it, it is not like Herman was like, well, Herman just didn't come from work. She knew where he was at. He's at a work right. party. She mm-hmm. called him multiple times. Yes. Yeah, and it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's, um, if that, if that thing for the character is not there at all, ever then why is it such recur- like I, I you do it one episode yeah okay that's fine but we've done it like six different times here where she's questioning this and it doesn't make sense because you've never established herman to do something yeah like that. it's not like she, <laughs> she called herman he was in a back alley getting <laughs> beat, beat you, right? right right so <laughs> we cut to herman snoring he's laying on the couch head closest to the fireplace Every, with, and with every honk shoe, the fire in the fireplace revs up. It's like, like inhale, the fire blows up, which I thought was amusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked cool. Yeah, I like that part. And then Kitty starts licking Herman's hand, and he thinks it's Lily. He's like, I'm not coming back to bed no matter what you do. And he realizes, well, well it's the cat. Then the cat growls, then the cat cuddles. Oh, I love that. I like yeah. seeing the kitty mm-hmm. cuddling up to Herman. That's yeah. cute. Now Herman is up, and he hears all kinds of noises. Like a leaky faucet, dripping. He tries to ignore it, but he can't, so he goes to fix it. He can't. He stumbles in the dark, gets a light. Uh, maybe I'll light a match. Just turn on the lights. So he lights <laughs> a match off of his pants. Whoosh, pants caught on John fire. And then he says, yeah. John Wayne never has that trouble. Keith? Yeah, here's John Wayne. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Herman in the kitchen turns on the lights finally. Blows out the can't the candle the match after he realizes it doesn't need it anymore. Tries to turn off the faucet, he does, and then drips even faster. So he just pulls the faucet out of the wall and ties a knot in the pipe. Yep. Good visual gag, mm-hmm. except it it was clearly a hose. Herman back to the living room and sees a mouse and he freaks out. <laughs> he does. I don't know. He was scared of mice. He starts screaming for help. Help, help, help. Gets up on the couch. Grandpa and Eddie run down for help. Grandpa's like, what's the problem? There's a mouse. You know, Grandpa tells him to calm down. But he made a mean fast, f- fast face at me. Showed his teeth and everything. Great. So the mouse freaks out Herman. Eddie tells Herman not to be scared because he'll be upstairs. Grandpa turns off the light. And that frightens Herman. That scares Herman. Yes. <sighs> and then Herman, or Eddie, Herman finds Eddie's doll, Wolf Wolf, that Eddie left behind Herman cuddles with it on the couch, which I liked. That was nice. Yeah. Herman, next morning, back to the breakfast table, but just Grandpa and Lily. Everyone else has already ate and gone to school, so Herman slept in on the couch. They didn't wake him up. They didn't <laughs> get. Lily's ignoring Herman with a classic sitcom Grandpa, will you please tell me what this person mm-hmm. is sitting at my table? Why is this person sitting at my table? Even though Herman's right there, I can hear him. Herman says, I'm waiting for breakfast. Then Lily says, I'm making you shit. Yes, uh, basically. Yeah. Herman's hungry. Pussycat wants to go num num. Uh, <laughs> and then Lily's like, no. But then Herman demands, as husband, so this Ugh. part I really hate it. As husband, father, and head of the household, I demand breakfast. Yeah, he slams, slams the, the table, table. Mm-hmm. stuff flies to the ceiling. Yep. Lily gives him a plate with three prune pits. <laughs> one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Lily storms off. Herman says, Grandpa, what's he gonna what am I gonna do? I can't spend the rest of my married life sleeping on the couch eating prune pits. <laughs> Grandpa gives the advice of wait her out, she'll come around. That's how you handle women. Um, yeah, yeah. So, in my experience, killer. 
Herman eats a prune pit. <laughs> Wait, what? That's a killer. No, don't. No, oh. don't kill her. Oh, okay. That's killer <laughs> advice. Is what okay. I meant to say. No, I don't th- kill her. Whew. In my experience, kill your wife. <laughs> Just kill her. Yeah. Just kill her. No, hmm, that's okay. killer advice. Killer. Advice. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, <laughs> that sounded bad. Um, will I edit it? Took it? me off guard. We'll see. For sure. <laughs> Keep it in. Keep it in. Also, because I thought that was not like. You weren't t- saying this killer advice. I thought you were saying that it was like, like grandpa says just to wait her out or whatever. And then like Herman's question, you're like, eh, just kill her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I know, casual about I know it. I how like, it huh? sounded. That's not what I meant. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so grandpa says to wait her out. She'll come around. That's how you handle it. And, uh, Herman goes, killer advice, grandpa. Uh, and then Herman <laughs> eats a prune pit just in case Lily doesn't come around and he needs to get used to it. Now, yeah. We cut back to Herman back on the couch. She can't get comfortable. Grandpa, this is the fourth night in a row down here. When is she going to give in? Then they pan over, and Grandpa's sitting on top of the mantle reading a newspaper. <laughs> Very strange. Mm-hmm. Just watching Herman sleep. That's strange. Yes. I was watching you sleep, my sweet prince. I hate to say it, but I think we're licked. Herman doesn't have the personality and warmth. He ain't got it no more. He has lost his groove. In the mm. furnace of romance, his pilot light has gone out. I like that line. Herman wants to know how to turn up the burner. Grandpa found it and the paper for a marriage counselor. Well, look at this. For the 14th straight episode, the solutions and add in the paper. Yep. Mm-hmm. Herman, me go to a marriage counselor? Hmm. Cut to Lily talking to Marilyn. Me go to a marriage counselor? Lily and Uncle Herman have been getting further and further apart every day, so Marilyn took it upon herself to make an appointment for Lily at uh, Dr. Harvey Baxter's... uh, It sounds like Dr. Birdman... (laughs) Harvey Harvey Birdman, Birdman. attorney (laughs) law. Dr. Harvey Baxter's office. She called and made an appointment for him. For and Lily's like, hmm, I'll go as long as Herman never finds out. I None of this makes any no. sense to me. I would think that a marriage counselor would be like a couple's counseling sort of thing. I thought they would both go together. Yeah. Yes. But apparently it's an opportunity for someone to go complain about their spouse and get advice. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. Very strange. And like, why would Lily not want her spouse to know this? Like I don't none of this. Right, it's, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's, yeah. it's 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 is it because it's the sixties and probably like counseling and stuff wasn't like it's was something maybe a little more frowned upon than like maybe. therapy is today. Mm, probably, I don't know. yeah. But it's it's not like it's not like like mental illness therapy sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, it, it's it, it's there's there isn't that stigma to it, but I guess there is a stigma as to failing marriage mm-hmm. in the time when. Fit marriages weren't supposed to fail at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's all it's all weird to me. I don't understand any of it. It's not like I'm yeah. doctor. I'm depressed. You know, like right. Well, this is also but it's also a recurring monster bit where like one person doesn't want to tell the other person about the problem that's going on. Oh God, they don't like a hundred percent of their problem is they don't communicate. Yeah, mm-hmm. in any capacity, like they, whatever. Yeah. All right. All oh. to say, it's basically just to set up that so they can both try to do yes. the advice at the same time. What yes. what could these guys have come up with for show episodes if they ever just were like, "Why don't we? Well, why don't these two just talk? Well, that's in the, the episode. All right, well, let's, <laughs> all right, let's come up with new concepts. Good yeah. Point. yeah, I mean, we've said this a million times. It's a Frankenstein's monster in his grotesque family. In normal society, you could find all sorts of premises for that. Mm-hmm. But they'd manufacture, manufacture, manufacture. So now we get Lily going to Dr. Harvey Baxter's office. And she's like, my name is Lily Munster. And he cuts her off. No names. I find that when there's no <laughs> names involved. People are less inhibited. Okay. What's the problem? Yeah. Well, I'm married. That is the problem. <laughs> Everyone that walks through this door has that made that same mistake. <laughs> Now we get to the part of the episode where there's 20 questions where Lily gets to describe Herman. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, oh my god. There's a couple new ones in there that made me laugh. Yes. Like, oh, you, you know, got you. Just... <laughs> Where was your husband born? <laughs> oh, he wasn't born. He was made. That yeah. Oh, a self-made man? No, he had help. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like that. that was funny. Is there another woman? No, the doctor quit after Herman. Mm, no bride of Frankenstein, huh? No, Damn. really not, no. So the problem is started at work. Very common. Husband buries himself at work and neglects the wife. <laughs> Has he buried himself? No, but there were a few close calls. <laughs> I like that, too. Clever, yeah. Uh, now, Lily gets to retell the episode up until this point, which is yep. every Classic. episode. The doctor assumes Herman is a playboy. And the solution is for Lily to go. So, this this, this makes no sense. Oh, he's a playboy, and this uh, like, we called it. Called, what did he? I didn't write the whole phrase down. It's like the, uh, the the some like the the gay traversals of a playboy or something. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah, something like that. And the solution for this situation is for Lily to go home and apologize immediately, <laughs> which I groaned at. Right, because. She's like, me? Apologize? Well, if she apologizes first, that puts the burden on him to realize what a loving and forgiving wife he is. (laughs) Sure. (sighs) So Lily's like, pounds her fist. By golly, I'll do it. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) Jesus Christ, go away. Uh, But remember, (laughs) you must assume the role of peacemaker and be the first to forgive and forget. And then I immediately started thinking of the monsters doing the peacemaker dance. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) And it's like, oh man, I would Lily love is that. peacemaker. I like that. They would mm-hmm. make Herman, what? Uh, John what Cena. That? Well, no, if Lily's peacemaker, then oh, Herm- Herman's sure. got to be uh, what's his face, uh, vigilante. Vigilante, yeah, yes, okay, Thanks, yeah. <laughs> So now, and, gra- and Grandpa Grandpa transforms into Eagly. <laughs> yes, yes Grandpa good. is Eagly. <laughs> I think Eddie would be more like an Eagly, right? And Grandpa would be like Peacemaker's dad. You <laughs> oh. <laughs> would, yes. Yeah. This is perfect casting. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh man, now now I wish get somebody to deep fake that for us. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have Herman. He's sneaking into Baxter's office. Yes. I think your secretary is taking a sun bath. She jumped out the window, went up the fire escape to the roof. Now the doctor looks up, is like, hey. But he doesn't freak out. He doesn't run yep. out the window. He just uh, looks so slowly at Herman. Good heavens, man. What happened? I like to you? this. I like this a lot. My wife and I got into a fight. <laughs> Good Lord, you should have defended yourself. No one should take God, a meeting man. Like No, 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 no. There's no physical harm. It's all emotional. And then he's like, Of course it is. <laughs> Begin at the beginning. Well, my wife locked me out of my bedroom and won't let me in. Naturally. Anything unusual? <laughs> No, it's like no bedroom, no food. No bedroom, no food, no speaky. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, what's the cause of this? Well, Herman stayed a little late for business reasons. And then he like, did like a weird eyebrow thing there. And now she's rejected me. The only thing he's had his arms around is Wolf Wolf. I like that. (laughs) Wolf Wolf, the hero of this episode. Doctor tells Herman the exact same advice Mm -hmm. as Lily. Apologize and be the first to do it. Do not allow your wife to assume the role of peacemaker. (laughs) I'm like, well, now Herman's peacemaker. Mm -hmm. And then Lily would be, uh, what was her name? Hartnett or Hart? Yep. Yeah, I think it's Hartnett. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I'm like, how is this? Well, now Grandpa would be vigilante. (laughs) And Eddie would still be eagly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's uh, great, man. Yeah. I like this. I, see, yeah, I was with you. I was like that first when he gave Lily's advice. I was like, really? That seems like horrible advice. But then it's, when he did the exact same thing to her, man, it's one hundred percent horrible advice. Yes, they're both it's, terrible, terrible. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. He's he's just got a thing he says to every single client. Like, yeah. just, you've got to be the peacemaker. That's all yep. you have to do. I love the idea of peacemaker. The monsters is peacemaker. <laughs> yes. So now. We cut to Herman walks in and sees Lily on the couch. And then we get this clip. Lily, I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you too, darling. Uh, There's something I want to tell you, dear. Oh, I'd be glad to listen, but I want to tell you something first. Uh, Lily, dear, 
if you don't mind, could I tell you before you tell me what you want to tell me? Uh, uh, no, dear. You let me go first, because what I have to say will save our marriage. Uh, Lily, if anyone's going to save our marriage, I'm going to save our marriage. Oh, no, you're not. Lily, all I'm trying to do is say I'm sorry and apologize. You apologize? But, but you can't apologize to me before I have a chance to apologize to you. Lily, all I want to be is the peacemaker. You, the peacemaker? Oh, you big dummy. I'm going to be the peacemaker, so get that through your thick head. Lily, will you pipe down while I'm trying to be sweet and apologize? <laughs> that does it. I'm not going to sit around here and, and be apologized to by a poor, insensitive oaf. They both want to be the lead actor, the peacemaker. Yeah, hmm. Classic. I'm the peacemaker. You're the peacemaker? <laughs> oh, man. Wow, what's the coincidence that we both use the exact same terms of wanting to apologize in the peacemaker? Did you go see a, a Did you go see a therapist? No. Yeah. Did you? No. Yeah. What? Huh? And so they, they're both pissed. They get all that stuff. They run upstairs. Lily locks them out again. Herman throws a fit and goes, Feral sticks! And mm. I enjoyed it. Eddie slides out of the revolving door to give Herman Wolf Wolf. Eddie eagerly coming in for the save. Yep. Yes. So now, oh, so I was being very conscious of how much time was left in this episode. Eddie, Marilyn, and Grandpa are in the lab. Marilyn wants to know why he's doing what he's doing because there's a real problem in the house. And Grandpa's like, chill. I got a plan. I'm going to give Eddie. This is the most cut and dry plan he's ever had. Very simple, <laughs> yeah. basic. I'm going to give Eddie synthetic measles. So basically, so Lily and Herman will see their sick kid and come together. And he doesn't want to drink the potion. Uh, and Grandpa's like, well, you don't have to because it's paint, basically. And he dips a paintbrush in and starts mm-hmm. painting measles on Eddie. Marilyn calls Grandpa a psychologist. But he says, no, no. No, I'm not. It's a trick I learned from old Shirley Temple movies. Now, when he says that, including the credits, there's two minutes and 54 seconds left in this episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, 254 <laughs> left for this episode? Mm-hmm. All right. And then he goes back to painting more dots on Eddie's face. <laughs> you gotta buy some 10, time. 15 seconds of it. Mm-hmm. Like, man, they just do not care. Lily comes running in frantic, calling for Herman. It's Eddie! And then Herman comes running and Don't panic. Herman's here. Look at his face. He looks at Eddie's face with some clearly painted on spots. Herman goes, what? And faints. Yes. Lily goes to Herman's side and, and just like, blah, blah, blah. Pussycat, loving husband. Well, I love you. Herman wakes up. Can you say that again without calling me a chowder head or whatever she said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Grandpa and Marilyn are looking in through the door, and they wave at Eddie. Eddie waves back. Successful plan. Yes. Now, I got I don't know, maybe this is just me, but the way that camera, like, pulls away from, like, Lily, like, laying on top of Herman, it felt very suggestive, suggestive to me. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> just Eddie's like... sick. He's yeah. got the measles. He's probably fevered up. He won't remember this. Mm-hmm. Let's do it on the floor. <laughs> Ooh, can you say that again, honey? Without the yeah, without the goofball part. Goofball, that's what it was. That's <laughs> just as good as Chowderhead, maybe even better. So now we cut back. Lily and Herman are walking down the stairs. Maybe that did happen because the rare else is downstairs now. I'm like, well, let's leave them alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lily and Herman are walking down together. Mm. Uh, we left Eddie alone one minute with Grandpa, and the measles disappeared. Now one mark on that sweet little face. And then Marilyn, Grandpa, and Eddie are sitting on the couch. Herman thinks Eddie's measles were a result of... They were psychosomatic. He was so worried about Herman and Lily arguing that he got measles. But that'll never happen again. No more worries. Because you know why? I'm not going to any more office parties. Yeah, he doesn't say, like, the only fun I'm ever going to have is being in this house. I was like, yes, that's not... I will find all my fun here. Yeah, so I was like, oh, that's not a healthy yeah. way to resolve this. No. <laughs> By the way, also, when he says, oh, it was psycho smack from the stress, Grandpa's, the look on his face is like, <sighs> yeah. Like he got, he just kind of does, like close eyes, shake his head, type, like, oh, God. <laughs> he used uh, to work yeah. psychosomatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty smart. 
So Herman walks over to the organ. He's like, the only fun I'm going to have is here. Sits at the organ, laughs, plays, and a bunch of smoke comes out. And then he, what is he playing? Camp Town Races. <laughs> then the whole family comes over oh. and sings Camp Town Races with him. The whole, and all the while he's playing, more smoke pours out. They sing for 30 seconds. <laughs> at 2.54, we had synthetic measles being painted on. Yes. Now we're getting 30 seconds of Camp Town Races. <laughs> They sing for 30 goddamn yeah. seconds. It goes on forever. Also, they had to have recorded that separately because there's no way any of them could sing anything with all that dust all that going smoke. on. I mean, you can't. Marilyn walks into the corner part over there and suddenly you cannot even see her. Yeah. Well, it's like when Grandpa was hanging upside down earlier and he was talking. That was clearly ADR because he mm. was probably unable to talk hanging upside down properly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, just the amount of smoke and stuff coming off there, like, I'm like, oh, God, dude. These actors had to go through that, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and why is it making that much smoke? I don't know. Is it just that dust? Because because it's the monsters. Thing. But oh, right. why do they sing Camp Town Races for thirty seconds, and then <laughs> credits? I mean, it's it's obviously Herman's favorite song. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I'm just yeah. bummed. I want Herman to go out there and party it up. That was the best part of this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was the this was the opportunity to to see what he's like at work. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want to see his work friends, the people who I guess you're right. They're, maybe they're like not good friends. I don't know, but seem like they like the guy. Like they yeah. want him to be there. So mm-hmm. like him know. enough to want to be at the party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, Hermie baby. <laughs> Which I yes. thought was amusing. <laughs> they call him the cube at work. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, that was uh, season one, episode twenty four. Love locked out. What did you guys think? Uh, this episode could have been locked out. Yeah, oh. this is probably my least favorite that we've watched. At least that, that, we, that, that, that we that we've watched in a while. Yeah, especially like there. Outside of just like okay, we could have seen like his interaction with people at work was the opportunity here. Mm-hmm. But they take so long just to get to um, the the counselor. I'm like, there could have actually been some fun interactions back and forth with him. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they go see him more than once and like they keep having like this back and forth of like just it keeps no matter what he says, they kind of like they misinterpret it or something. And it and it continues to escalate until he kind of like goes a little nutty with the whole thing. I, I was just like they saw him once for a couple seconds and then that was it. And like, ugh. I, it, yes, just so much that they could have done that they decided this was the best opportunity to, to hmm. do this one. Yeah. yeah there's not many can... laughs in this overall either. I mean, it's... What's that? There's not many laughs overall in this no. thing either. It's just it's that it's just there. And I mean, when we're saying that the the toy Wolfman is the highlight of the thing, I mean that's kind of telling <laughs> you that the seven point two is extremely lofty. Yeah, this isn't my favorite. I think the whole conceit with Lily getting mad about this just is that this wasn't a good reason to be mad at all. I thought, I, I, especially as an audience member, I want to see Herman out there like partying it up. That's fun. He's wearing a little party hat. He's singing weird songs. This is great. I like seeing that. <laughs> um, but it, it becomes kind of a bummer when yeah, they're just arguing the whole time, and it's mm-hmm. about something that's just so unreasonable that I, I just can't get that invested in it. You know, so I, I don't know. And I, there were moments that made me laugh. I thought it was funny that the marriage counselor gave them both the exact same advice, but I don't know. It was just, uh, it was kind of, yeah. So definitely a lower tier episode for me. I would say. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I, I to say I enjoyed many moments of it would be a stretch. I think I, I did enjoy seeing Herman at a party with a party hat on, singing a bunch of you know uh, public domain songs that yes. were previously recorded. <laughs> Uh, and then I just like that. Come back, Kirby, baby. <laughs> I like those, I like those little bits of pieces. I like him breaking the key off, punching the hole in the door, being a little tipsy and just excited about having a good time. And he wants yes. to share it with his wife and she's upset. Yeah. And that's like, it's a real downer. It's like, Oh yeah. I would have loved to have seen them like party it up together or something. And then the whole episode is just like them bickering again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. It's always something. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> oh, well. well. That was my transition. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. 
another episode in the books. But we add three more pages to the book of the things that broke the babysitter. <laughs> so what broke that unbreakable babysitter from episode one? We're in episode 24. So we've come up with uh, possibly possibly 72 different ways in which she's broken. Yeah, that's from, it's, yeah, she's broken a lot, but you know what, mm-hmm. what I love about her? She always bounces back. She does. You know, for me, I think it's, yeah, when Lily is uh, leaning on Herman after he passes out, the camera starts to pan away to something we can't see, and, yeah, they're getting down to business. The producer happens to walk by as the family's all peering in at them, and <laughs> Eddie turns and gives her the okay symbol, and she just she thinks that's just not right. You know, that, that, that that's not a good... <laughs> Not in front of the children. <laughs> when they're yeah. all just watching him. Yeah, it, she's she she thinks there's something a little bit sinister and weird about that. And she definitely weird. She's gonna go talk to some people. Uh, maybe some you know child protective services. I don't know. <laughs> Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's when she keeps hearing Herman talking. Like, I don't want to say it's it's not like it's not baby voice, but it's like baby language, like the pussy cat want come Betty. You know, bed sleepy bed by, or you know. yeah sleepy by and he says something else again later on like that's very like a similar type thing and like i think that's what breaks her like she's she's put eddie to bed and starts walking out she sees herman there he's like pussy can't want go sleepy by she's like what the fuck is sleepy by what the yeah yeah <laughs> like sleepy. yes i How think that's what you? breaks her yeah yeah i think she was broken by all of the smoke and shit that came out of the organ. <laughs> like literally she had to go to see an oncologist the next day. It's like, mm-hmm. I just don't feel right. And uh, yeah. Uh, well, you've inhaled uh, <laughs> toxic gas. Weird. So much mm-hmm. s- stuff. Crap from the. Yeah. You've got six months to live. Sorry, babysitter. <laughs> yes. oh. well, luckily the season is. It? <laughs> yeah. Season can... one's going to wrap it up in another 15 weeks. Yeah. After episode 24. Oh, Jesus Christ. It is almost 15 weeks. Oh. <laughs> well, you said right about Thanksgiving time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, we still God. have a long way to go. I know. Just for one season of the yeah. Munsters. There's a season two. Oh, man. So much. So many Munsters. All right. Well, so that was an time. adventure. Keith. Yes, sir. What kind of good stuff do you got to tell the people? Now, our schedule is a little bit off because we were been posting the uh, Patreons as sneak peeks. So this is technically, potentially, assuming no other hangups, September 5th. Well, awesome. Wow. Awesome. Uh, well, there's been no other hangups, folks, uh, than this Friday, September 9th. It's that was birthday. great. Well, and to celebrate, oh. that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> Season two. Oh my God! Celebrate! You're kicking celebrating off. my birthday like that? Wow! Don't yeah, wow. gift yeah. to you, Derek. Yeah. Uh, we're kicking off. I I shifted the release dates to Fridays because, um, the initial release date of the Karate Kid cartoon was on uh, September 9th, nineteen eighty nine. So I'm, I'm matching them up with their actual release dates. Uh, Are you I will kidding say, me? Oh boy! Yeah. That, um, but you 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 realize the significance of those like oh boy significance of what we were freshmen in high school that year. Did, let's not remind let's not remind me of that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so with on the same tangent, I don't mean to do really Keith, but I saw somebody tweet earlier that uh, younger people are talking about the '90s as the late 1900s. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's well, amazing. Uh, I'm even even worse is that um, again, once again, I don't really pay attention when these things come out, and freshman football games were on Saturdays, so I never saw the show ever. It's, it's, mm. I missed the entire thing. Yet thought maybe I had. Uh, got several episodes already fully recorded. Megan Danger is on our first uh, episode, and they are fantastic as usual. Uh, anytime they've been a guest on like Papa Filmcast, excellent episode overall. Way better than the Karate Kid cartoon deserves. But uh, happy birthday, Derek! No, oh, Keith, thank you so much. I'm That's going to celebrate present. by watching a cartoon from 40 years ago that I just don't. 30 years ago, 
It's not 40. Let's not push that. <laughs> I know. You know, what's remarkable when I think about that, it's like, so we're looking back at a car- at a TV show that's 60 years old. Mm-hmm. Now, if I yes. was a kid, let's say 89, and I was looking back at something from 60 years ago, we'd be doing a podcast about the train driving into the movie screen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think... Do you realize how ridiculous that is? That'd be amazing. I, we oh my do god! A podcast about that. <laughs> I am Derek, and I am a train fearer. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't even think a, a motion picture was that not like, <laughs> just a train coming through the screen. <laughs> yeah, I got others as soon as I saw that thing. Oh my god! <laughs> we'll be going second by second, folks. Like it's all we can bear is a second at a time. <laughs> the train, every second, it gets a little bit closer. Yes. We come back the next week, and it's still in the hey. same spot. Yeah, and guess what? It still seems shorter than how many Munster episodes there are for us to go through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, oh, man. Well, that was great, wasn't it? That sounds like fun, Karate Kid. You can never go wrong with a cartoon based on a movie that, that people loved yeah. seven or eight mm-hmm. years prior. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. It. Regardless of how bad uh, the cartoon itself is, uh, first three episodes have been recorded. They're all fantastic. Please check it out and listen. The guests were great. Well, there you go. Listen for the guests. Stay for the pie. Oh. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, sure. Free pie for every listen, really? Oh, Keith, mm. such promises. Wow. Well, <laughs> that, that's not a lot of pie I'm giving out then. <laughs> <laughs> I got leftovers for the next day for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a cobbler, please. Mm-hmm. Terry, what about you? Uh, I've got another show I do. It's called Run the Rail. You can check it out. It's about movies. We do categories. I'm not sure when the hiatus will end, but we've done recently summer blockbuster movies. We've done Paul Thomas Anderson movies. We do all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, check it out if you want. It's pretty fun. It's interesting. I don't know. We don't give away free pies, so I guess that's kind of a, a <laughs> bummer. But <laughs> it is a bummer. Yeah, um, but you know, if you, uh, I, I think you just send send your request for pie to Keith, and I'm sure he'll hook you up. So yeah, he will. Cheesecake. Keith, <laughs> that was great. Gives us vouchers. Um, if you listen. <laughs> Good at every. That was great, wasn't it? Retail location. Yeah. Yep. Participating. That was great, wasn't it? Retail location. Yes, yeah, exactly. none of the retails uh, retailers are actually participating. Though. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> just just the flagship store, which is in yeah. flagship North Dakota. Is that where it's at? I can't remember. Uh, well, failed. Oh well, joke. Derek, what do you got going on? Oh, for me, I got nothing but the Patreon. Haha. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, fooled you. Uh, yeah. please tune in to the Patreon. Get. Uh, amazing Patreon content like Skuma Stowaways or, man, Pizza Hunters. But I, I have another yeah. idea. I got to run it by these gents first. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. want to tease yeah. it, but I, to me, it's a slam dunk. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Terry might come up with a goddamn game. Another goddamn game for <laughs> Terry. Who knows what anything's right. possible mm-hmm. in the Monster Hunters Patreon where we're just yeah. doing stuff, having fun, and seeing what sticks. Yeah, all of it so far, sticky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's been some there's been some free samples uh, set out already onto the yeah. main feed. That gives you an idea of the fact that you know we we can spread out a little bit when we're not just talking about an actual episode. Oh, yeah. And um, it, it's it's well worth checking out five bucks a month um, for some great extra content. Where uh, you know we're being goofier than we normally are. Yeah. yeah. If you got any ideas that you want us to cover, hit us up too. We'll be happy yeah. to do it. Yeah. 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 Monster Hunters on all the socials and Monster Hunters at Gmail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Num- exactly. Number one in that Bing search, baby. Number one in that Keith Bing search. Bing. For Keith have a like, sort of deal with Bing that we don't know about. He keeps yeah. bringing up Bing. Keith is, gets Microsoft rewards every time somebody <laughs> bings. Yep. Every it's Bing is points. a ching ching. <laughs> oh, boy. <Wow. laughs> And with that, (laughs) oh well. (laughs) Oh well.
are Derek Glasscock, Keith Gola, and Terry Vickroy. Keith is the host of the Pop-Up Filmcast, and that was great, wasn't it? Both shows can be found wherever you subscribe to podcasts. For more about Keith's shows, you can follow Pop-Up Filmcast on Twitter at Pop-Up Filmcast. And that was great, wasn't it, at How Great Was That? You can also follow Keith on Twitter at KG3030. Terry is one of the hosts of Run the Reel. It's a movie podcast that does deep dives on films with a theme. You can follow Run the Reel on Twitter at Run the Reel. You can also follow Terry on Twitter at Terry underscore Vicroy. If you would like more musings from me, you can follow on Twitter at Derek the number nine and the word nine. Follow Monster Hunters on Twitter at Monster Hunters and subscribe on your podcatcher of choice for more Monster Hunter fun. Monster Hunters is mixed and edited by me, Derek. All original music is composed and mixed by Terry Vicroy, and executive producers are me and Keith Gollum. The Monster Hunters is a Crispy Dodo production.